Hi, Richard Knudsen here again. And in this video edition of the Dynamic CRM Trick Bag, I want to talk to you about one of my personal favorite topics. That'd be integrating Dynamic CRM and SharePoint. Now, a lot of organizations use both of these products, and if yours does, you might have already thought about some of the ways you can make them work together. I try to take a right tool for the job approach. So SharePoint's great at managing and letting users collaborate on relatively unstructured content like documents, web pages, pictures, videos, and the like. Both its licensing model and its web content management functionality make it more suitable than CRM for something like a public-facing website. So for example, here's my company's website. It might not be obvious, but it's all SharePoint. Now, since I'm signed in as a site administrator, I can go over here and pull down the Site Actions menu, and if I choose a command like View All Site Content, it becomes more obvious. I mean, you can see the document libraries, lists, and subsites that characterize the SharePoint experience. And there's uh, the Site Collection Images Library in particular. It's interesting for our present purposes. It's a picture library, which was introduced in SharePoint 2007, but it's really just a specialized kind of document library with some features tweaked for managing images, like this ability to show a thumbnail that you can see here. Now, once I find the image that I'm interested in, I can right-click it and use this copy shortcut command to get its URL on the clipboard. And we'll come back to this in a little bit and show you why I might want to do that. Now let's switch gears and talk about CRM. So dynamic CRM, on the other hand, it's all about highly structured data, generally rows and columns of data about counts, and contacts, and opportunities, and many other entities some of you are probably familiar with, and, and of course, custom ones you can create yourself. You can think of it, in fact, as a platform for building customized relational database applications. And with the structured nature of the data, it's also generally easier in CRM than it is in SharePoint to create things like workflows to implement really specific business processes, a lot more granularity than you can easily do in SharePoint. So this is my company's slightly customized CRM online application, and you uh, immediately see some of the obvious differences. It's less about pages on a site, more about tables and structured data. So SharePoint lists don't have relationships between them, but the relational aspect it really is fundamental to the CRM experience. So a simple example would be to navigate to an account form and just go look up a good one with lots of contacts and I open up the form for Accenture. And once we get the account form open, I can click on contacts here and see all the contacts that are related to Accenture. You can also create custom entities and specify the relationship between those entities and existing ones and so forth. But for now, let's take a look at another entity that every CRM has. That would be the user entity. Go to administration, and click on users. I can pop open a user record and you'll see a slightly customized form here. So what I did was I added this to the form, this photo URL field. Interestingly, it's actually built into CRM out of the box, into the user entity, but it's just not exposed on the default user form. So I added this, and it's empty, and I display this uh, lovely message here telling me to add a photo. Now, if I select the photo URL field and paste from the clipboard, we'll take advantage of the URL from SharePoint that we copied to the clipboard a few minutes ago. If I tab off there, you can probably guess that what I've got is a little chunk of code on the change event of that field. And what it does is take the URL for this record and update the source property of the field you hear, see here that displays this image. This is so-called iframe control, and in a minute, I'll show you how it works. So we've got data in SharePoint in this case that describe a record stored in CRM. And since the data in this case, an image can be displayed with the URL, this is a situation where we'll want to use the iframe control. Now, once you start thinking about this, there are lots of examples. Think of account records in dynamic CRM that have documents having to do with them stored in SharePoint. Or you might have a product catalog in CRM but store pictures of your products in a SharePoint image library. These are all examples of the right tool for the job concept with structured data in CRM and some related data stored in SharePoint. In this case, you can think of the SharePoint data as metadata, data about the CRM data. And there's no real need to create redundant data in CRM when we can simply extend the CRM application by including the SharePoint data in this way. Let's take a quick peek at how this works behind the screen, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is go to Settings, Customization, and I'll go to Customize Entities, and we'll open up the User Entity. 
Once I get this opened up in the customization UI, we will navigate to its form and I'll customize the user form like so. Then, once it's open, let's pop open this iframe control here that displays the photo. Now an iframe isn't a normal CRM attribute that we'll add from the database. Rather, I'd add an iframe control to a form by clicking this add an iframe over here. And uh, you can see here it's got a URL property. This is the source URL that our code needs to update dynamically. So we'll close out of here and let's go look at this photo URL field, which is where we pasted the URL in from SharePoint, if you remember in the user experience. And what I'm going to do here is navigate to the events tab and open up its change event. And here's the uh, relatively simple code that fires when the value of that photo URL field changes. What happens here is it takes what's on the right hand side, the value of the URL that's been entered into the field, and assigns it to what's on the left. That's the source property where the iframe looks to for its, its web data. There's a slightly more complex chunk of code in the load event of the form, since you need to do something different depending upon whether the record's already been created or not. But the essentials are really captured in this simple one-liner you see here. Now, this probably doesn't seem like a big deal, and uh, maybe it's not. But an important point I want to make is how generalizable this is. This essential theme with occasional variation can be used really in any situation where content that can be expressed as a SharePoint URL is related to a CRM record. To illustrate, I'll show you an example in an entirely different context, but that uses almost identical techniques. This example is still in our CRM online environment. It uses a custom entity I've created to keep track of learning resources. I've exposed it on the Resource Center. So I'll navigate to the Resource Center and click Learning Resources. And what we can do here is use a custom entity to get similar functionality. We store our videos in a nice familiar SharePoint document library, so we can use the same essential approach. I can navigate to this entity and I'll select a view that I've created, call this the customizations course, and this view exposes the various learning resources that make up a customization class for Dynamic CRM 4. Now this is an entirely custom entity. If I open one of these forms, you can see what this looks like. Very similar approach. Take here. Notice that if I tab down, I've got this resource URL here, and I'll uh, cut that, and if I go to the view tab, notice I don't get very good results, but I'll just uh, paste it back in there. As soon as I remove the focus, the change event fires, and you can see that we're going to be taking a similar approach here. If we looked at this, you could see that there was an iframe here, and I have an um, almost identical little chunk of code behind the change event of this resource URL. This is a custom attribute that I've added to this custom entity that I can use then to expose videos in this manner. Okay, so since this is a custom entity, hopefully it'll give you some ideas for the kinds of applications you might want to do. But these examples that we've looked at are what I'd call CRM-centric integration with SharePoint, where from the context of a CRM record, it makes sense to find some related information stored in a SharePoint site. Now these examples are pretty straightforward because the URLs were static and our users would simply need to locate the address of the SharePoint resource and enter it into the URL field on the CRM form. I'll close by giving you a glimpse of a slightly more complex integration. Now what I'll do here is navigate back to the accounts entity and let's uh, go find an interesting account. If I pop open the Accenture form here, you'll see a, again a slightly customized account form and notice now I've got tabs here for live search and MOS search. And notice in particular I'm on this record for Accenture. And if I click on the MOS search tab, here's another interesting SharePoint integration. This one's slightly more complex. What I'm doing is that I'm dynamically constructing a SharePoint search URL. I'm going to then go out and use it to construct a URL that does a search against our SharePoint, this Accenture, anywhere within our um, SharePoint intranet. So if I go to another account record, click on Moss Search, I'll get search results for that account. Similar approach for a live search. Here's a, a public site. Live, you can do the same thing with Google, with Maps. There's lots of applications of this. The general point is that if there are data out there that have to do with a CRM record and can be got to with a URL, you can use an approach like this to integrate them into your CRM applications. So I'll talk about some other applications of this in future sessions. But for now, Richard Knutson here signing off, and I hope you found this helpful.